Has someone ever wronged you? Maybe taken some of yours or made a joke at your expense? Now, as you're thinking of all the wrongs someone has done you, I'd like to hit you with this. Have, have you ever wronged someone? Now, when we get into conflict, there seems to be a lot of different ideas on how to handle the situation. Now, sometimes, more often than not, we ignore the issue, which can be detrimental to any relationship because it allows time to blur our thoughts towards one another and leaves the problem unsolved. Now, instead of ignoring conflict, let's look at what we are commanded to do. Now, this year at LTC, we focused on Romans chapter 12 and analyzed each verse and word and their Greek meanings. Now, from that chapter, we can find a verse that relates the most to my topic. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If it possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Now, God has commanded us to live peaceably. Now, if we, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, we can see that it says, Blessed are peacemakers, for they should be called sons of God. So God commands us to be peacemakers and to work out conflict with one another. In Psalms chapter 34, verse 14, we can read, Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now, the word I'd like to draw your attention to is pursue it. We're supposed to do anything and everything in our skill set to pursue peace, to get from point A to point B, and work out the conflict with our brethren. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace with all people. That means everyone, not just who you like, but your enemies. And if we keep um, later on the verse, it says no one will see the Lord. Without peace, we're supposed to pursue it. But without peace, no one will see the Lord. So we know that not peaceably living with one another can separate from him. In Mark chapter 9, verse 50, we read, Salt is good, but if salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. From this verse, we can infer that the opposite is also true. Tasteless salt is worthless. So a life not living peaceably can separate you from God and therefore be worthless. Now, if we are supposed to live peaceably with one another, we must not be afraid of conflict, but instead have the skills to deal with it. Let's go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 18, and we'll camp out there for a couple, just a little bit. Yeah, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. So, from this verse, we read that we're supposed to consult or confront our brother privately first. You want to confront your brother who has wronged you or said something about you during this lesson or in front of everyone or during a potluck. It's privately. And if you keep going down to verse 16, we read, But if he will not hear... Take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. When working out situations with someone you have wronged or someone has wronged you, it, words can often, often be um, misinterpreted. So by taking one or two of your friends, they can establish that, that you are trying to work, you are trying to pursue peace with one another. Let's go down to verse 17. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. So, worthless salt, a heathen and a tax collector, if we do not live a peaceable life. Now, I mean, let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you, who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you be tempted. Now, we're supposed to confront and restore a relationship with, with a brother, but you who are spiritual, restore one in a spirit of gentleness. So that you want to work to, um, towards peace. And then it all comes down to um, the golden rule. You know, treat others as you want to be treated. Um, but that's, that's a, a way more packed statement than just that. Because to treat others how you like to be treated, you first have to figure out how you want to be treated. 
and it'll be easier to treat others in the same respect. But you have to treat yourself with some respect, at least, to treat others the same way. If you let other people walk all over you, how can you treat your brother the same way? Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. So when, there's, when you're consulting your brother privately first, you must not gossip about, uh, about him or her to your friends. It is, you're supposed to work out the situation together and try to pursue peace and wrinkle, I mean, iron out any wrinkles in your relationship. And it also means that those involved in the situation should keep it private. And those not involved shouldn't be in. So if you drag, if you drag more people in the situation, I don't know if you noticed, but it makes the situation so much, so, much, so much harder to deal with. Because everyone has an idea on how to handle the situation. It's not between them. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, For every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. And that's a pretty scary thought. Every if and but you, she, he did, you'll give account of it on the day of judgment. Now, confronting is only half the solution. You must also learn to forgive. Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 18. Verse 21 and 22. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. No matter how many times your brother sins against you, you're supposed to forgive him, but you never forget. There's a, there's a, um, a statement, forgive and forget. That's a very dangerous statement, because if you forget your brother's transgressions, it's often the case that it repeats. I mean, the only person who forgets our transgressions is God. If we forget, the situa situation can be so much more complicated than it needs to be. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So we, when we are working together in the situation to, to further um, peace, live peaceably, to be the salt, we're supposed to do it in a way to gain our brother, as we read before. I mean, as we learn... How to deal with conflict, we must always remember Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. As a church family, we want to be together. We are social beings. But when two or more are gathered, there will be always conflict, always be conflict. And we are called to be peacemakers in a society where that is an almost a foreign concept. We're often told that instead of turning the cheek, the other cheek, we should punch back twice as hard. But if we are to emulate Christ, we must forgive our brothers and sisters in Christ by confronting them, setting our own house in order before we criticize the world and coming out of the conflict stronger than before. Now I'd like to draw your attention back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Sons of God. Well, how, well, how, would, you want, how would you become a son of God? Well, if we read Romans chapter 10, verse 10, we must hear. We must believe Mark 16, 16. We must confess Romans chapter 10, verse 10. We must be baptized, Acts 2, 38. And finally, we must remain faithful, Revelations 2, 10. If you are subject to the invitation, which come now as you stand and sing.